when we have three magnets arranged as shown, and a force is given linearly to the middle magnet, it will be able to pull alongside the other two magnets. But the other magnets will be able to lag with the original speed. This is the basics of working principle of linear motors. When we talk of motors, one may think of the rotary ones, such as single phase motors and three phase motors. In control and automation, we may think of maybe DC motors, servo motor and stepper motor. But linear motor are widely used in these areas too, in transportation, industrial automation, consumer electronics, and even medical devices. The concept of linear motors are widely used due to its high precision, efficiency, low maintenance and fast response. In today's video, we want to explore how linear motor works. Examine the concept of linearly traveling magnetic field within a magnetic field. Linear motor is an electric motor that has had its stator and rotor unrolled. Thus, instead of producing a torque rotation, it produces a linear force along its length. But for better understanding, let's first understand the basics of electricity, such as how single-phase and three-phase alternating current works. Electrons exist in a conductor. When current passes through a conductor, there is formation of a magnetic field around the conductor. The direction of magnetic field and current is well summarized by right-hand rule. Similarly, when a magnetic field cuts a conductor, these electrons will be able to flow which we describe as electric current. When we use a coil and a magnetic field cuts it, there will be induction of voltage, which is well described by Faraday's law. When we use for example a permanent magnet, and it cuts the coil while rotating, it will form an alternating current. For instance, we know that the magnetic strength of a magnet is stronger at the pole. So for example when the south pole of a magnet is approaching, the current gradually increases to the maximum, then when the south pole is moving away, the current gradually decreases. Similarly when the north pole is approaching, the current gradually increases, then when the north pole is moving away the current gradually decreases. This when plotted forms a sinusoidal waveform, and when both north and south pole has cut the coil, it forms one frequency. But something to note, is that, the north pole plots are on the positive half cycle, and south pole plots are on the half negative cycle. This is due to direction of magnetic field in the magnet, and also well described by Maxwell's equations and right hand rule. When we talk of three phase alternating current, then the coils are displaced 120 degrees phase from each other. Also the sinusoidal waveform plotted are displaced 120 degrees phase from each other. Also for more about the electricity generation, check our alternator video for more. We have also explained the working of single phase motors, servo motors, DC motors, and stepper motors, so kindly do watch it out. The construction of a linear motor is quite similar to a three-phase induction motor. For instance, Imagine that the stator of the induction motor is cut and spread out flat. This forms the primary of the linear motor system. Similarly, if the rotor is cut and spread out flat, it forms the system's secondary. As a result, the primary and secondary of a linear motor are flat and appear in the form of a sheet. Now, when we apply a three-phase alternating current to the three-phase coils arranged linearly, this is what happens. The first scenario, the red phase is at the negative, the yellow phase is at the positive, and the blue phase is at zero. Therefore the current flows through the red phase and yellow phase, but on the opposite direction. That red phase current is opposite to the yellow phase current. Let's freeze the magnetic field formed at this first scenario. Next, the red phase current is on the negative, the yellow and blue phases are at the positive. The direction of current in the blue and yellow phases are similar, while the direction of current in the red phase is reversed. Hence, let's freeze this scenario's magnetic field formed. 
Next, the red phase is still on the negative half cycle, yellow phase has gone to zero, and blue phase is on the positive. Also let's freeze this scenario's magnetic field. The last scenario, the red phase is zero, yellow phase is negative and blue phase is positive. Then let's freeze the magnetic field produced at this scenario. Now let's analyze these magnetic fields. The first scenario we have the magnetic field produced as, similarly the second scenario as, same to the third scenario, and then the fourth scenario. Clearly, we can note that the direction of the north-south induced is shifting towards the left. Therefore, we can clearly see that a linearly moving magnetic field is formed within the induced magnetic fields by the three-phase supply in the coils. When a conductor is placed at these linearly moving magnetic fields, it will move linearly. This is because of the relative motion between the magnetic flux and conductor of the secondary, leading to the induction of current in the secondary to produce a linear force or thrust. This is well explained by Linz's law. Also something to note is the pole pitch of the motor. However, as is the case in rotary induction motors, the rotor plate cannot catch the speed of the traveling magnetic field. Therefore, there will always be slip in linear motors. First formula is Vs equal to 2 times F times T, where Vs is linear synchronous speed of magnetic field. T is the pole pitch in meters. F is the AC supply frequency. Also, the magnitude of the thrust can be calculated as F equal to P over versus, where P is rotor input power. Vs is linear synchronous speed. The actual linear speed of a linear motor due to slip can be calculated as V equal to in bracket 1 minus S times versus, where V is linear motor speed. Versus is velocity of the traveling magnetic field. S is slip. The primary and secondary of a linear motor can be made vile. However, the stationary member must be continuous throughout the intended length. The final design is simple, just fold your primary and secondary to form a linear motor. Linear motors have several advantages over conventional induction motors for rectilinear motion. For instance, a linear motor's moving part rides above the track on a cushion of air, eliminating energy losses due to friction and vibration. This is not the case with conventional motors, where intermediate gearboxes are used to convert rotational motion into rectilinear motion. Characteristics of linear induction motors include factors such as end effect, thrust, levitation, and transverse edge effect. Like our Facebook page at Wired Wisdom Engineering. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, kindly subscribe, like, and share. See you in the next one.